crowdfunding is the allocation of small amount of money from a lot of individuals to one particular project facilitated through an online process, usually a dedicated website. Um, this takes the form of donations, of rewards, physical rewards or service rewards, um, lending, so debt and also equity investments. Um, globally, we estimate that roughly 2.5 billion euros were invested in 2012 and about just under 1 billion euros in Europe. For 2013, we're still waiting for figures, but it will be significantly higher. There is already quite a bit of interest in the development aid industry on crowdfunding. For development aid in particular, right now, um, activities around renewable energy, sustainable development, um, small-scale infrastructure development are already being financed through crowdfunding um, quite successfully. For the microfinance industry, it's probably one of the oldest entries into the crowdfunding world through platforms like Babyloan or Kiva in the US that also have um, significant impact already. And then there's also the possibility, of course, through um, donation campaigns, maybe disaster relief or development-focused um, initiatives through specific donation-based platforms like PIF World in the Netherlands that allow you to collect money here in the West and then allocate it into the developing world. In theory, there are no limits. We, we, we see a lot of, really a lot of different projects from different uh, sectors. Um, as I said, for development, it's right now focused on smaller technology or infrastructure investments or, or support for you know, renewable energy, sustainable things. Um, in general, we see everything from you know, creative media, records, books, videos, to Hollywood uh, blockbusters. We see services. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but we see services development, mobile app development. Uh, we've seen startups financed from different sectors, IT, biotech, everything. And um, we even see co-investment into communal investments, where, where the local communities don't have enough money to fund certain activities. They ask the crowd through specific platforms to co-invest into this against a, an interest payment. So there are a number of other things that are not necessarily worth mentioning as well, but more or less everything. We see everything right now. Um, starting a crowdfunding platform can be really simple or really complicated. It depends on the type of crowdfunding you want to do. Um, on the donation side and the reward-based crowdfunding, for now the regulation in Europe is fairly simple. It focuses on e-commerce and e-money. Um, and you usually navigate around that by working with a payment provider that is already fully regulated. So you don't have much to worry about that. You should still, of course, consult a lawyer. And um, then you can even use open source software that allows you to build a crowdfunding platform. Um, the majority of your work is, of course, building a network of people that want to invest, and also those that have projects to put onto your platform. But the, 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 the barriers are fairly low, much more difficult for credit and investment type uh, financial structures. There you need to consider a large amount of regulation and it might take up to a year or longer to, to do it. Well, uh, the, the risks um, are twofold. Um, it's a very young industry and it's partly misunderstood. It partly hasn't developed yet as well, so it still needs to become more professional. And one of the risks is, of course, that we have adverse actions by regulators or by public authorities that will hinder the growth of the industry. Um, the other risk is the, the risk that people that invest or donate money, that they lose the, the investment or that they don't receive the benefits that they expect. Um, so far, there hasn't been any type of fraud that has really come to the forefront. I don't think that is something that will come very soon, but it will at some point. Uh, so the risk is here also to professionalize the industry, to create standards in order to avoid the risk of, of that happening. Um, the challenges are, of course, um, it's a very young industry, it's a very low margin industry, and it hasn't scaled yet. So 
there is hardly a platform that is sustainable right now on financial matters. Um, many of them are still raising funds themselves. And we need to grow this industry into an area where it can finance itself and can also pay attention to professional standards and, and you know, best practices in order to protect clients. I think it's twofold. I mean, locally, uh, Luxembourg is fairly small. So you will probably, with the, the environment that you have right now, not reach very large transactions for now. Nevertheless, there's many opportunities for local crowdfunding, for local impact crowdfunding, for cultural issues, heritage, maintenance, um, that could be done already now through donation and reward-based crowdfunding um, without too many problems. For the investment side or the, the lending side, of course, there's again the regulatory issue. But I think the real opportunity for Luxembourg would probably to establish crowdfunding spe specific regulation at fairly low cost and low hurdles that is in line with European harmonized regulation, for example, MIFID, USITS, um, so that crowdfunding platforms from all over Europe could set up in Luxembourg and then passport their activities into the other EU member states and then avoid heavy regulation in those countries. That could be uh, the way forward for Luxembourg.